We're here at the UCS Waterfront Gallery in Ipswich to talk to some of the artists and curators involved in the latest iteration of the ongoing collateral drawing project. What's the idea behind collateral drawing and where did it come from? Okay, so collateral drawing was launched uh, two and a half years ago and it has been running under my curatorial platform, Beast and Projects. It started in Plymouth, Plymouth College of Art. They funded the project and the idea was to invite certain artists that could expose elements of their practice and show that alongside a final outcome that they've made from their studio. So if you like, there is more to an outcome from an artist studio than the artwork itself. Galleries usually will only show the final outcome. So it's quite interesting and unusual, if you like, for the first time to be able to expose those elements from the artist's practice in a gallery environment. Is the work that's on show, is it work or is it literally the, the byproduct of another work that then isn't being shown? It is a combination of inviting an artist from six months ago and asking them if they are interested to participate in the exhibition and the studio visit is then conducted and works that they may have produced already which also have the collateral elements alongside it are then shown. Sometimes the artists when they choose to actually be part of the show might make a specific artwork within that six month period and the collateral elements will also be collected up at the end and shown alongside that. The main point about the collateral element is the byproduct in the artist process. It is the surfaces in the artist studio, i.e. the floor, the table tops, surfaces, the wall spaces. There are marks that are made that are often subconscious in the artist's uh, creativity, which, because they're unaware of, often become discarded, severed from the artwork. Um, and by showing those, exposing those, it if you like, allows clues into how the artwork has been made. I think also with this, with this show we tried to get artists who weren't necessarily working in traditional forms of painting and sculpture, so, so what would collateral drawing mean to someone who say works in social spaces or, or with land art or say someone like Ryan Gander who's making uh, artwork that questions the very nature of what an artwork can be. So we have, in, a, in a lot of the work in this show I think there's not such a clear distinction between the collateral and the final artwork. Sometimes the collateral feeds back into the artwork, or it is the artwork, or it's like it like becomes like a chicken and egg sort of situation, you know. So, so sometimes an artwork is made to be destroyed, and then that the collateral comes after. So it's an it's just interesting to sort of um, expand the definition of what collateral drawing could mean. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a difficult thing for artists to do, isn't it? Because it's very exposing in a way. A lot of artists are quite secretive. And I guess that's what it's like. It's like yeah. a show that reveals the magic trick yes. that shows you how yes. it's done in a way. Uh, OK, so this is the entrance to the Clashal Drawing exhibition. So you come through the main foyer um, and it's introduced by a, a snapshot of a, a little bit of the press release and the artist's names and the title. And then we move on to the first exhibits over here. Um, which are in fact the curator's wall which John and I decided to put ourselves here as a kind of introduction into the space. We thought we, we work quite well as a pairing partly because of the scale of the work um, but perhaps also the, the subject matter within the work um, and the methods in which, which we paint very differently but maybe using very traditional methods as well within our working practice. So this area here is actually my collateral elements. Um, the actual large piece that came out of this body of work is actually in the, in the corridor as we go through, proceed through to the exhibition. Um, my working practice in my studio, I work on, a, on a, a very, very large scale wall of polystyrene and this here, this is a tiny fragment of the polystyrene wall that I've taken away. The marks that you see on the polystyrene are made through the methods in which I create my paintings, drawings, prints. I use traditional methods which I then hybridise, so I work with oil painting and etching, but I actually fuse the two processes together. So I'm using printmaking methods, if you like, to push the oil paint onto the surface of the linen. 
This work, for instance, which is a study, and this is a drawn study for the larger work in the corridor, um, is one of a few that I made. This is actually oil on linen on panel. The linen itself is loose when I paint it, um, and it's built up over time, and I'm pinning it onto the polystyrene wall uh, with dressmaking pins. The larger works are made out of very, very tiny sections of linen, often about 20 by 18 square pieces of linen, and I will have hundreds of these that are constructed over this polystyrene wall. And as the paint is being built up, so these marks are then being made. So the gestures of uh, handling the paint are applied directly using a brush, um, but then often offset by then putting it through an etching press, an intaglio press. The, these collateral elements here, the marks that are built up, are things that just happen through the process. The etching blanket here has been put here as, if you like, a gesture of the printmaking process. Again, the marks that are on the blanket are from the impression as it goes through the press, um, picking up the marks over a long period of time. So there's a kind of layering that's going on through that as well. It's all over the press, it's everywhere. I use an offset process, so in the paintings there's a seam certainly in the drawing here and also in the painting here where I'm actually I work on a positive side building up the image and then I offset it on the on the other side so no half is more important than the other they belong to each other they rely on each other um, and that's really my work well, when Bella came to me with the with the, the whole premise for the show you know at first it was it seemed like a bit of a minefield you know in terms of presenting all these elements alongside artworks and and all those sort of complex relationships that would go on so so my idea was to try and create an efficiency with this show I just wanted to try and that pair things back and be very very selective over what pieces we showed so that we could um, so there could be more focus on these certain elements and, and, the, and create a dialogue I mean for me personally it was a real eye-opener in terms of being an artist as well and it really made me look at my sort of personal practice and the, the things that I wouldn't really notice and uh, and I can see already it's, it's kind of had an effect on the way I work and think about the way I work so okay for me the um, I thought I found the premise very difficult at first when Bella came to me with it because I work in a very clean tidy studio it's almost like a, a monk's cell or something and uh, there's no marks I clean up every day the walls are completely white so I really struggled to find, uh, I had to dig deep basically to sort of, and I started looking around the studio, I started looking at the floor where my feet had made scuff marks and things and, and, uh, and then I just, this, this is a, this old Georgian table I always work on and it has got some traces of um, worked marks and abrasions that have been left and, and even like the woodworm that's been on there in a sense is, is kind of becomes part of the collateral to me. Like I say, with, when Bella came to me, it's really interesting how it opened up my eyes to my own process. I mean, the, this painting in particular is part of a series of still lifes that I've been making um, since I moved to Aldborough. Um, I did a residency in the watchtower there, and you, you're sort of locked up in a tower for a week um, with the sea and nothing else, so you're kind of just there on your own, but it's like staring into the void, you know? So I just I sort of went internally and, and just placed these elements. I took some elements along that are important to me, like this globe which my mother gave me for Christmas, and um, and some candles, and uh, I had a, a spirit lever which my brother gave me. They're all quite symbolic to me. So I just kind of played around with arrangements in this in this studio and made these paintings really that were a kind of a mark of that time I spent there. But since then, it's developed um, into these. Um, they're more kind of allegorical still lifes, I, I see them in that sense. And they're very traditional. I don't see them as sort of trying to be contemporary or, or anything. They just sort of are what they are in a sense. And I see them following in traditions like Mirandi. I think. And then when I paint, I'm also trying to remove the gesture in a sense. So it's sort of as if it's been painted by an invisible hand. So, but then again, you have this trace of the marks, like the surface of the wall here becomes a sort of... Um, a parody of a, or a synthetic, a synthetic kind of surface, as it were. Yeah, well, I was asked by John and Bella uh, to be, be in the show, and uh, you know, the work, you, you know, with any practice, there's bound to be evidence of there's the tools. 
to make the piece, and then there's kind of the detritus, there's the kind of what, what remains. What uh, the curators decided to show in here was the, these template curves, and again that's, that's part of my tool set if you like, but they're tools that I made many years I was working in the studio, but to make these pieces it's got a high gloss finish and I started using a, a car spray place and it's very much a collaboration with technicians there where I'd be spraying some pieces, they'd be spraying other pieces and uh, sanding down so there's kind of it's a it's a time consuming process you start with the start with aluminium then it's priming the surface uh, so there's successive layers of sanding and yeah you know, there's some of the discs you use it's kind of it's a da machine that's used in every car spray workshop and uh, so it's you're kind of working through kind of di different layers getting it finer and finer then you spray the piece and then they're put in a kind of a, a large oven. Normally a car goes in. You know, I'd work on a number of panels at once. Um, and there's, again, there's an unknown about which panels go with which painting. I'll have an idea, but often after the event, it's almost like a, an element of a game where I'll be shuffling these panels around and I'll think, okay, that works. Well, that went as planned, I'll leave it. So some of the pieces look very, very similar, but then never exactly the same.